Hello everybody, I was recently at Bloomberg Technology Summit and I'm here to report at some of the things that you should be aware of when it comes to the future of technology. There was a lot of great session, let's say for sure. Bloomberg did a very great job at making sure that they covered all the topics in technology but also having a very good, diverse bunch of speakers. They covered topics from AI to cybersecurity, investment, fashion and technology, metaverse and so much more. So I'm here to report of all these that you need to be aware of. Right, the first session of the Bloomberg event I want to talk about was the European technology navigating the next boom. I think what has been very interesting is that obviously London or should I say the UK leaving the European Union hasn't changed much for London as a tech hub of Europe. for dancing. For COVID, you know, raising investment was so much easier, but now post-COVID it has become much harder. I think it's something that people should be aware about. I think one thing that I really picked up from this session was the importance of European sovereignty. European sovereignty has not been yet been mastered by the European Union with American companies leading the market and always innovating. And with that risk, there's a risk um, that we should really, really be aware of. So I think it was a very good point that I've actually discussed on one of my uh, podcast episodes of Tech Brand Talk, which we discuss the importance of protecting European sovereignty, especially when it comes to technology and who is leading this market. So Americans are leading and we can't say otherwise. So that was one of the key things I like about this session. All right, the next session I want to talk about was the AI Wild West, which was led by um, a number of great speakers from Dark Trace to C3 AI and Human Rights Watch, very important. And Olivia Sullen was the editor from Bloomberg who was leading the session. I think what came out very strong is that AI is still very well not under control. I think people don't realize how much AI plays in all, all our interaction, especially when it comes to social media and so much more. I think some of the things that ha was highlighted by the speakers was first Thomas mentioned about people should be scared of AI. And I think the thing that is not re rightly done right now is its regulation and also its protection of maybe even the new generations with increase of social anxiety and, and uh, isolation and so much more. But I think it's interesting in terms of how AI has been used, as was mentioned by Frederick, in terms of AI to detect weapons and also help not being making unconscious you know, biases in terms of decision, which leads to, you know, discrimination and so much more. So I think what's interesting in terms of how much training is being done when it comes to AI, but also how we're utilizing AI to actually increase human interactions, not the opposite. Another session I really liked was with Farfetch, the CEO and founder and chairman of Farfetch, Jose Neves, which was discussing, obviously, AI in fashion. We know fashion is probably one of the most polluting when it comes to ESG reporting and so much more, one of the most polluting um, for the environment. And it's interesting to see in terms of how can we use AI effectively uh, in that space and how AI cannot cope with creativity. I think AI is an enabler. But when it comes to creativity, it's still far behind. Um, so it was interesting in terms of what Jose was saying in terms of you thinking about AI and beyond AI, but also where we are moving towards Web3. And if you think about Web3, where we where we were, Web1 was read, where we are is read and write, you know, and we are moving to an, what Web3 is about, is about reading, writing, and also owning, and with the decentralization of who owns the IP. So it's interesting in terms of how AI would be used in terms of on-demand luxury, but also to increase sustainability, which is probably one of the most important parts when it comes to fashion. I think AI and new technology gives also the power for, as Jose mentioned, a new vision of what fashion is supposed to be. It can be completely democratic, can be sustainable, especially that can be sustainable and most importantly, profitable. Because it's a thing about the oasis, definitely. I think another element which was very important a part of this conversation is how we are, you know, changing the relationship of customers with their brands. So fashion can be democratic, fashion can be sustainable, but most importantly, it should be always profitable. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting session that we can learn about. Another session I really liked was a session with Aisha Evans, who is the CEO and founder of Zooks. And I think what's interesting about technology, I think bringing new innovation is obviously very hard, but trying to change people's mindset and try to change an entire 
culture in how you perceive an industry that's another level and, that, and that's what zooks is about zooks is about mobility on demand and really trying to get people to really forget the the necessity of ownership of cars where anybody can just have access to electric cars on demand so it was a very interesting conversation that they had and i really actually advised it to the entire conversation and how you know when you think about technology when you are trying to change mindset it goes also how you implement or how you get the government to support you and and all the number of requirements that comes with changing uh, an industry so it was very interesting in terms of what they've done and how far they are already when it comes to car mobility and ownership another session i really liked was a session on the metaverse and i think metaverse is still very foreign for a lot of companies who haven't explored the additional opportunities and never seen it i think people don't see or perceive the metaverse as a new market to the tangible. so you have a tangible market but you also have an untangible market which is a metaverse so we had um three fantastic speakers uh jovina adriana and Geoffrey. We're talking about that and how they've been utilizing it in fashion. I think it's interesting in terms of a fashion space where designers are actually creating collections, or we can say skin, for the metaverse, which also what's very interesting about that is actually 100% profitable, which is, again, another avenue that you should be, where you are as a business, are you to let, utilizing the intangible market, which is a metaverse, to really reach another type of customers, another type of prospects. Really something to think about.